Hi, my name is Nikki Emilike, CEO of Nesting College. Welcome to Centerpoint Africa. It is a program centering on education, international politics, domestic politics, community development and business. I have special guests here today. They focus on business today and I will let them introduce themselves. The first guest, Baba Tinde, please introduce yourself. Thank you. Um, my names are Baba Tunde Davids. Um, I'll say I'm Yoruba first. You're Yoruba first. Okay. Then I'm a Nigerian. Then in a Nigerian. Okay. Good. Um, I'm the second of. Ten siblings. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm are, the they, are they boys son. and girls? Yeah, uh, I'm the first son. Yes. And see my name Babatunde, for instance, it means reincarnated. <laughs> so I'm I'm the first son after my grandfather died. Okay. Batano. Okay. And um, I have an elder sister. I have um, two younger brothers. Okay. After me. Um, then I have um, other younger sisters. So we are three boys and seven girls. Wow. <laughs> it's lovely. So tell me a bit about your background in terms of um, business, if you don't mind. If you've talked about your, bit, your family uh, in regards to business. Okay. Um, let, let's start from how I went to school. Okay. Um, I was born in Kaduna, St. Gerald's. And um, my parents moved to Kwara State in 1976. Okay. And I started my primary school in a missionary school called Chapinosri Primary School in Ilari. Um From there, I went to staff school to do my common entrance. Started secondary school, same in Kwara State. That's where we're from. Okay. Um, a boys' school, a grammar school called Oro Grammar School, OGS. Um, the school was established in 1958. Ooh, okay. So it's, it's, it's a very... In the southern region, it used to be one of the main schools. Yeah. Um, in the western region, it used to be one of the main schools. Then um, I went into architecture. I did my um, diploma in Kwarapoli. Um, I did my ND and my HND in Kwarapoli. Okay. Um, then I, I went to um, Foot Oweri, which is called Futo, mm -hmm. oh. to do, yeah, to do my PG <laughs> in project management. And project management, okay. Then I started work, um, gradually, I served in Kogi State. Actually, during my service um, at the camp, I was um, nominated as the most disciplined male call member. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and, um, well, it's good that you're laughing about that. Yeah. <laughs> I served um, with the deputy governor's, in the deputy governor's office. Okay. Then is, is, it, is it in voluntary basis or basically? Normally or? after your camp, they send you to um, different places to, to serve the, the, your main primary assignment, it's called. Okay. So my primary assignment was in the office of the deputy governor. And they had... Uh, um, Kogi State Investment and Properties, which was where I served. Um, I still remember it like it was yesterday, it was over 20 years. Wow. <laughs> and um, I started architecture, which was very interesting. Um, and um, the experience sort of grows with one, like okay. I'm still having today, you know. Um, gradually, it broadens one's mind, you meet yeah. people, you do projects. Yes. Um, there are rewards. And um, at the same time, there are pains, you know, no pain, no gain, they say. So whilst growing and doing all these things, there are a few pains and gains um, along the way. Oh, thank you very much. Now I need to introduce the second guest. Please, Scholar, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Nikki. Um, it's a pleasure being on this platform. Thank you so much. My name is Scholastica. Anumon, I'm a true Nigerian as well. Um, I'm a mother of four beautiful children. 
and um, I'm a businesswoman. Um, I'm a mental health advocate. I also do a bit of public speaking. I work with young people and lone parents as well. My journey has been a very interesting one. Just like my friend here said, <laughs> there has been very good uh, journey and not so good ones. However, in all things, we have to be grateful. Yes, we have to. And um, I'm um, the first child of my parents. Um, come from a very large family of eight. And though I lost a sister, bless her soul. So about seven of us left now. And um, I migrated to the UK in 1992, to be precise. And um, I have had um, quite interesting experiences in my journey um, to becoming um, an entrepreneur. So um, whilst I was in Nigeria, I went to Our Lady of Apostles in Yaba. It used to be one of those um, popular schools, they call it Ola Girls. Uh, for those who are familiar with Ola Girls in Yaba, we used <laughs> are, are, you, are you hailing them? <laughs> well done, Ola Girls. Well done, Ola Girls. Right, so um, yes, I went to Ola Girls and um, I traveled down to the north, Bayer University, where I um, had a degree in media communications. And then I came to UK in 1992. And this is where I am today. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much for that interesting um, information. Now, I'll talk to the CEO of Project Magnet. Um, what interested you into going into at architecture? Oh, okay, yeah. You know, um, construction. Okay, thank you, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll start with by saying my dad is yes. an architect. Okay. Um, he's actually the first fellow in the northern states of Nigeria. Well, um, Kwara State is classified as North Central. So, um, and I think being the first son, I would say to you, my choices were two. I'd love to study medicine, which was the first one. And um, the second option on my mind was civil engineering. Um, but the interest was there. Whilst we were young, my dad would take us to um, his site on Sunday after church, and then we'd go back home. But by virtue of interest, I chose constru construction industry as uh, my second option, which was civil engineering. And I found that architecture was actually very interesting. Um, you do projects from inception, you take design brief from clients, you do the design, and you see the projects grow. Mm -hmm. And that's what interests me. Um, and after a very long time, yeah. um, even during the period whilst I was doing it, things change. Okay. And because change were in inevitable, we, when we were in school, we drew on um, a drawing board. Okay. With a set square. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, all I can say is we all <laughs> experience exactly yeah. the same thing. Well, yeah, once, so. once I started working, <laughs> things yeah. um, moved quickly to um, computer. Yes. And they call it CAD drawings, um, computer aided design. And it was so fascinating. We started learning. I think the first time I ever started using CAD was. Um, 1998, and I was um, really 13 at that time, and it's grown, you know, from that state till now. So I, I think one of the things that actually interests me is yeah. um, the process of what an architect does, make the design, I know. oversees the project, and and you have in Nigeria most time we do residentials. Yes. So you actually see people move into their houses, yes. you know, if it was a school, if it was a government property. So these are the things that really entails me. And it's quite rewarding. Because yes. every time you drive past, if it was a house, oh, I did that design. <laughs> <laughs> so that personal okay. pleasure sort of 
um, encourages me to do more and grow within that industry. And um, when I came to the UK, yes. um, it was slightly different, which um, it wasn't a shock to the system. It was more or less the weather. The weather. We, we built in Nigeria with hollow blocks. Oh, okay. And I got to the UK and I found bricks. Yeah. So how would they do this? Yeah. And every time I go into a building, I'm trying to like, the walls were so thick. Okay. How did they do this? Then I started work. I got my first um, appointment to start work. And it took me about six months yeah. just to look through the drawings. Every time I go to the office, like, what's this called? But it's so interesting. And it's quite, um, like I said, it's rewarding because you have a um, team of people working with you every now and then. Yeah. There's always something to learn. Yeah. Especially when I came, I was trying to do my qualifiers exams. Yeah. Um, I actually had to register at uh, an online book club. Okay. And I was reading after work, sending books to the house and stuff. And this was really interesting. And well, that, that's, that, those are the things that drew me that drew into, you into the construction it. industry. Wow. It's Thank moved you. slightly now. Okay. Um, since I started my practice, but it's about seven years now, 2014 we started, um, it's going to be seven years next year, May. Yeah. Um, we now do um, refurb works, design works, so I've moved from the consultancy side okay. to the more development and project management side, because right. it's part of the qualifications I had as well, even from the, before I left Nigeria. Was, um, was it a progression, like it's more of a progression, or was it in, in, in terms both within the... Um, I think the, the, what I saw in it was when I came to the UK, it was just different. Okay. It was more broad. Yeah. Um, architecture back home was more of the consultancy side. Yeah. So when I came to the UK, I can say, okay, you can do um, project management side, you can advise, you can actually do proposals as well which in Nigeria, um, most time at that time, we started from, probably went because of where I started. Yeah. Maybe if I'd stayed till later in my career or, or, yeah. or my experience with in architecture in Nigeria would have been different. But I think when I got here was yeah. when I would call my proper starting stage. Yeah. And that gave me the um, grounds to see different areas I could go into. And um, I would say the biggest um, exposure I had was when I worked on Olympics projects, okay. um, 2011, 2012, as one of the design consultants um, through Circle. Oh, really? They had upgrades on all DLR station, 85 station and substations, and they had um, Stratford International, which was brand new, and we did all the upgrades um through circle as a service provider so that's where i actually saw maintenance people um design consultants services consultants so, so the development was more enormous in terms yeah, of what you gained exactly from okay. where, where we where I started as an architect okay. and that's what we do now we basically we render services architectural services from doing your designs for you yeah. um we render services on maintenance yeah um we, we, there's what is called cyclic maintenance we we one of the nominated contractors for one of the London housing associations. Oh, really? Yeah, and um, so exactly. what they do with the properties, with the tenants, they do upgrades, um, keychains, bathrooms, to meet regulations as the, um, the property ages, okay. or with wear and tear maintenance as well. So we actually do quite a few. We, we travel as far as Liverpool. Um, I have a team of trades and... Um, consultants, other professionals, about 22 men. And really? Um, we really, really, really on ground um, to, to do a lot of things for people. We do um, extensions, um, love conversions, alterations, parts of wall services. Um, if you're doing anything that, that bounce on, on your parts of wall with your neighbor. Okay. But our forte yeah. is um, dwelling. Okay. We do regeneration projects as well. But my forte is dwelling, so which is um, what I've actually decided to work and grow. That's okay. where we are. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's go to Scholar. Um, what inspired you into going to business? Very good question. 
Um, in my case, it was a very humbling beginning. Um, I never envisaged I was going to end up as a business person. My main focus was to obviously to pursue my career within the um, entertainment or media industry. But I found myself going to business due to family um, yeah. shifts, so to speak. <laughs> um, I work, when I came to UK, or prior to coming to UK, my job was I uh, used to work with the Minister of External Affairs. I mainly worked with uh, diplomats in Nigeria. So on coming to UK, I thought I could perhaps continue to pursue such a similar career. And um, I had a few odd jobs because obviously the, the change in location, you have to find your bearing and your footing. So um, I did a few menial jobs like in healthcare, waitressing, um, but I got, I think I got my first major break when I work with um, uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, that's BBC. I was a PA. Um, in fact, my boss was the manager on the East End of set, so. Ooh, okay. I, yeah, are you big enough <laughs> East Enders now? <laughs> I'm a great fan. <laughs> Hi, so. East Enders. <laughs> So, I mean, I was taking around the site and it was quite intriguing to see how, um, to meet some of the cast and see how the production were being run. So I did work there for a couple of years and then I moved on to work with um, uh, another company, another media company in the West End. And, um, I worked with a media company for, I think I must have been there for about six months to a year, and then BBC said they wanted me back, and I had to go back. But this time it was quite different because um, I realized, but when I got back to, to working with BBC, uh, my first two months back in office, I realized I was expecting a baby. And, um, wow. because, <laughs> and I, I think it's something very interesting. It was. It was quite interesting because um, I didn't even know I was expecting, you know, and I had gone yeah. probably close to midterm wow. and I wasn't aware. But I could feel all the, you know, the pregnancy symptoms and all the, all that comes with pregnancy. But I think it's one of those things I cannot put under the table, under the cooler, and I thought I could just, you know, bulldoze my way through. <laughs> So, um, because my job as a PA was fast paced, I had okay. to travel with my boss, take go to meetings, stayed up late. It became a chore. So, I thought to myself, what do I do? Obviously, I cherished my baby. So, <laughs> I resigned. I resigned from my job, and that's how I came into. Um, business and then the interesting thing about my journey into business is the fact that um, when I left my job I wasn't quite sure as to what to do I knew I wanted to do something I wanted something flexible whereby I can earn an income and spend time with my family with my children as well and um, I recall one day I had gone out to do some mini you know, local shopping yeah. And I ran into a group of boys and they said to me, they, they saw me carrying a uh, bear, shopping bag. Were they young people? They, they, they're probably in the, uh, about 16 years, between the oh. ages of 16, 18, 16, yeah, 18, thereabouts. Okay. So um, they approached me and at that time I was a bit skeptical. I thought maybe they were coming to <laughs> something. I wasn't sure what okay. to expect. <laughs> right, but it turned out that uh, they were just, you know, good kids who just wanted to help. And they asked me if I needed help with my shopping. And I said, yes, I don't mind. And then they helped me and that was it. And then a couple of weeks later, I went down the same road again. And one of them actually identified me and said, hello. And I said, hello too, where did I know you from? And he said, you're the lady from so, 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 please, the yeah. other time. And I said, good. And that was it. And whilst we were talking, 
um, a police vehicle was passing by and suddenly these boys ran off. And I thought to myself, what's going on? Why are they running away? And they ran off. And the police stopped and asked me if I knew them. And I said, I don't know them, but I was just talking to them. And they said, but you were talking to them. I said, yes, but I don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And um, they left and they went. So I went looking for an office. I thought to myself, I need to do something for the community. So I went looking for an office and I got myself an office. And it so happened the office was in the same area where I had this encounter with these young boys. Okay. And um, I started, started off as um, a business center where I provided uh, business services whereby uh, people in the community would come around and do a soft internet cafe, uh, if they had any admin, because I think it was pretty much my remit and my, my backbone. So, um, and uh, one thing led to another, and then one day I had um, a visit from one of the local job center manager, and he came around to me and he said, we are looking for local businesses who could help us. Do you think you can help? And I asked, what, what, what kind of help are you looking for? And we had a detailed discussion, and um, again, one thing led to another, and it turned out that they wanted me to deliver training. So I began my interesting journey with the wow. Department of what, Works what and Pension. What particular training did you focus on? And basically what I did was um, they contracted me out to provide um, training for these young boys, employment, empowerment, um, empower them with skills, um, um, get them back to work. So for them to go back to work, obviously they had to go through the basic skills like interview techniques, confidence building, um, how to search for job search, career guidance and progression and things like that. So that's, those were the main things where I was told I could provide. But then again, I hadn't done that before. So I worked in collaboration with the, uh, with the job center and Department of Works and Pension. And um, we built a what, very. Was this in London? Or? Yes, this was in London, oh, okay. in Lewisham. In Lewisham, in oh, Lewisham okay. boroughs. So I, we provided the services. Uh, we didn't, uh, it was a pan London um, contract whereby all the London boroughs, we reached out to all the young people within the boroughs. So we could have referrals both from London, Bromley, Hackney, Walthamstow. Greenwich, just name it really. So, yeah. but our primary focus was in Lucian because the office was based in Lucian. And uh, I did that for a couple of years. And then I moved on to, well, I would say it's quite interesting because whilst I was doing that, I, I took a lot of passion and great interest in working with these young people because I could see the, fa the fact that we were able to engage them positively. Um, I could see transformation in some of them. Obviously, we couldn't reach out to everyone, but the few that came apart, we were able to uh, impact on their lives. So um, majority of them were ex-offenders. Some had come out from prison. Um, wow. custodial sentences, some were in hostels and had some fa real family issues. So we had a, a pool of uh, mentors, coaches, um, you know, people who could actually work with them on a grassroots level to ensure they achieve their goals. So we did that for a couple of years and from then on, I took a lot of interest in working with people who were enduring mental health. Now, I've been asked the question so many times. Yes. Why mental health? Why mental health? <laughs> the great question. Yes. Um, it's, it's interesting because um, every one of us, we have... Um, I'm, not an, I'm not a mental health... Um, um, I'm not a doctor in mental yes. health. However, there's a degree of... Um, stress in every being and it depends on how you manage yourself um, there are genetic uh, mental health whereby it's something that runs in the family and there are environmental mental health triggers as well 
the majority of them are either drug-induced ones whereby they could no longer manage their mental health. But saying that, um, I'm somebody who have a lot of passion in making sure people are empowered. I take great interest in seeing the well-being of people and that's where the passion to advocate for mental health originated from okay. and um, from then on I began to work with lo major local authorities again it's a pan London um, contract I was working with a lot of local authorities whereby I I mean I had a, a residential home where they will refer people enduring severe mental health uh, we work with stakeholders multi um, agencies who are responsible for their care so we would offer them good accommodation and take care of them as well and till date we still do that um, I would say we've literally worked with well over 500 people enjoying mental health when I say mental health these are people with severe mental health um, people with schizophrenia bipolar and on top of that with forensic history so they're coming straight out from prison they're coming into the community mm -hmm. some are coming straight from the hospital okay and we look after them thank you so much continuing this exciting conversation and um it's been really great talking to my two lovely guests here as we go on to the ceo of Bab the babaton day and um please tell me um, about sports, because you do know quite a lot about that. Um, thank you, Nikki. Actually, um, my secondary school days, I did track and field. Um, I did quarter mile, they call it at that time, and it was 400 meters. And um, They call it what? Quarter mile. Quarter mile, okay. And what do they call it now? Um, 400 meters. 400 oh. meters. <laughs> okay. So, um, so at is, that is time, it the difference from the Nigerian one? It's just, is it the, the I, same I think, with I, the UK? I, I think the track and field just start giving new names to stuff because oh. um, the, the standard metrics was the mile was the UK while the inches and stuff was American. Yeah. And we did uh, millimeters, and we were colonized by. The British, so yeah. we we follow suit with them, um, so. education standards and stuff. So they call it quarter mile, but now they call it um, four hundred meters race. Mm -hmm. So at that time, um, I was very young, um, and I was doing fifty-two seconds to go around the field once, and which is really good. Even now, I think the world record is about say 42.5. Wow. So if at that time, well, 30 years ago now, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite interesting to do. And uh, I played volleyball. Um, I remember when, I think it was my second year, we actually played handball. And some of us actually represented Nigeria to play World um, Under 12 handball yeah. in Canada. Well, yeah. I didn't go with them, but we had boys from my school who progress to play. Um, I played volleyball and um, I actually went on to play volleyball for Choir States, um, okay. went to national camp. We actually played what was called Zona Qualifiers for Commonwealth 1996. Right. Yeah, I was at the camp. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, with sports, I, I, I was really, really active. Um, and towards my end of, um, say, my age and the, I, yeah. I started doing bodybuilding. Oh, okay. And uh, how did you find that? Well, in Nigeria, we just go to gym. You just go to gym, you and know. You know find out, did okay. you think you were doing bodybuilding or you just said, okay, let me just start going to the gym? I, I th no, with sports, because um, with volleyball, we, we always go camps. Okay. And states camps, national camps. So you see the weightlifters. Okay. When you go to the gym, we do cross training with them, and you actually see bodybuilders. Oh, really? Yeah, because um, they have um, there's a niche where people actually in the UK they call them personal bodyguards, yeah, you know, or close sec close security guards. Yeah. But in, in Nigeria, they they just have them as bodybuilders, and it was just leisure and fun. And because I'm six foot tall, six foot two inches tall. Okay. And I, I saw my frame as quite interesting for bodybuilding. 
and we are, we are offering, I remember in my service at the camp, I actually contested as uh, Mr. Macho. <laughs> Macho. I'm even in my house till, till now. Yeah, my missus still teases me, Mr. Macho. So it was. They need really, to tease you about yeah, that name, Mr. Really Macho. something that happened at that time, which I, I really, really liked. And I have my kids doing sports now. My mm -hmm. my daughter um, did swimming, my first daughter. The second one still plays football now uh, with Hot and Girls. Really? Yeah, and I just love sports, um, but unfortunately, I, I didn't do, I didn't go pro because of my yeah. career. But it's all good. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you so much for that information. It was quite very interesting, especially the macho man. Now I need to talk to the CEO, Scholar. So tell me, Scholar, um, what's your career progression? Hmm, interesting. Quite. Um a lot really. Um, I have actually, like I said earlier on, I have progressed from a very, very humble beginning. Okay. And I've walked my way up there. Um, currently, I'm running this residential accommodation for people who are enjoying mental health. And um, three years ago, I was nominated by Goldman Sachs as one of the black businesses. Well, I think you need to stop there. <laughs> did you did you hear that? <laughs> wow. Um, yes. How do you feel about that? Because um, being nominated by Goldman Sachs must have been very uh, great for you and your family as well. Just tell us how your family felt when that happened. It was um, it was very very it was quite an interesting experience to be yeah. honest. Um, I was very intrigued. Yeah. At that time when it happened, I didn't look at it as a big deal, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I was very much interested in being able to move, <coughs> excuse me, move my business from uh, one level to the other, le to the next level. And what Goodman Sack does is they basically work with small businesses, micro businesses, yeah. and then they give you business models whereby you can, you know, continue to expand and enlarge your business. Wow. It, it, I mean, it involves a lot of hard work. I know. But if you, are, if you have the resilience to do it, it, it's worth it. Wow. It's worth every second. Yeah. Okay, we'll carry on with the career progression. <laughs> I think we stopped from Goldman Sachs. So tell me a little bit more, because I know you have how many businesses right now? Um, at the moment, um, I've got two businesses. Um, I'm also... The founder please, of please mention the business so that everyone will know <laughs> the businesses and it's she's here a, to also promote her business as well so right it's um, called community training and yeah. employment project CTEP for short okay. and what that does is um, basically um, we work with young people they're one of the people that I take a lot of joy and passion yeah. in working with and so we work with young people lone parents and also, we work with older women, people who are looking to going back. Um, perhaps they've spent the majority of their lifetime you know, raising their family, and they've gotten to a point where that maybe kids are all grown up now, and they're looking to now go back into the employment market okay. and um, have a create a new life for themselves. So we work with them whereby if they have any hobby, they're looking to um, turn into a business or have an existing business, they're looking to grow. Yes. So um, we work with them. And also I do consultancy jobs as well, I know. whereby um, I work with new businesses, startups and existing businesses, people looking to grow their business as well. So that's um, pretty much my career progression. <laughs> Thank you very much. And let's go back to the CEO, Baba Tinde David. Um, can I ask you, you know, um, tell us about Project Magnet, please. Tell us about it. Okay. Um, thank you, Nikki. Um, Project Magnet Consultant actually got um, established in 2014. Okay. And this is how this will happen. After the Olympics project, um, I was fortunate to work with a company called Broadwalk Merlin. Okay. Um, they should be 
I think top 10, top 12 architecture firm in the world. Mm -hmm. And they had a project I came on as um, sort of consultants or design uh, architects. Um, it was a 2,500 hotel unit in Azerbaijan. Wow. Yeah, in Baku. Wow. And they were doing all you know, <clears throat> contractors were on site. So it was basically about the detail of the finish and the functionality of all utilities and amenities um, at that hotel. And that was where they had the 2018 um, Champions League games. Yes. Yeah, the, the hotel has been in, um, it's been running since 2015. So when I came, when I finished that project, um, I just found out there's a niche in the industry yeah. and it's maintenance. And a lot of people move into properties or they buy properties and after the while the wear and tear, no one looks after it. Yeah. And most homeowners don't necessarily know what to do, yes. even though they want to do maintenance and they know what they like. Um, they know what they want, yeah. what they don't. And most builders can provide a service for you based on your brief. Yes. So if the homeowners does not really know what, how they would do or present or have what they really so much like, and the builders can only work on your instruction. Yeah. As an architect, I could advise my clients or, or, or um, homeowners on, okay, if you want to do this, yeah. How does this meet regulations? Yeah. And that's how it starts. Uh, I st uh, started. And I thought it was going to be that easy, like I just said it. Yeah. But it wasn't. We started, um, I'll tell you accurately, my first, my first project, we lost about 20 grand. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because. Um, yeah. So how was it? How did the team feel? Did it. Yeah, you well, know, ev everything went flat. Anything went flat. And but, that's just pick yeah. up again. That's what life does. Yeah. I mean, as you go along, you're gonna go uh, through struggles. It was, it was just, when you go through struggles, please stand up. Yeah, that's all uh, you need to do. Everything just went flat, and um, the few people who stood around me, then I included my family, my wife, yeah. obviously. Um, we still we still work together today, but at that time, a lot of people just went away. But like, what made Project Magnet Consulting um, stood? Yeah. or relevant was because of the niche we carved from uh, what's missing in uh, maintenance, house um, expansion and, and upgrades. So we, we just have a system where we're a one-stop shop for any project in the, in, in the, um, in the dwelling industry or yeah. in the dwelling market. Yeah. So we can actually um, help you view yeah we can go to auction with you if you've okay. seen a property so uh, we can help you analyze um what is called the the package for the property yeah they, they call it legal pack so okay. we can analyze the legal pack before the auction day okay. we can view with you yeah um we can advise you okay based on what you want to do with this property um based on where the property is we can give you like heads up and how much you might be willing to spend so it's good for you to either go in or don't go in or, don't go or like in. what your standard builder will give you you invite yeah. them and they run your project so um we project manage um, the whole process um, we have subcontractors in all areas um, certified electrician certified heating engineers um plumbers seaters tilers decorators okay and so we, we, we cover most Almost everything. The, the only area I would say we don't do, we don't do letting. Yeah, oh. We don't do letting, but we, from you buying the property, um, working on the property, we ev we can even introduce other clients to you if you want to sell. Really? Yeah, yeah. We can actually introduce other clients to you as well. So these are the areas we cover. Um, if you want to buy, we can help you. Yes. To buy with another agent who's going to do the transactions for you. Or we can look out for properties for you, um, yeah. for you to, to sell. And we have another company on the side. Yeah. Um, I remember Scott was saying um, humanitarian works and so. Um, I have a company called African Ark. And you know, Ark in the Bible is this big boat that took everything away. <laughs> 
<laughs> so basically, African art for us was anything we can take from here yes. that is still useful in Africa, not necessarily in Nigeria. Yes. And I can say proudly, um, we've had schools who had donated stuff for us from books, computers. We've, we've, we've taken back to Nigeria because wow. we just started. And um, these are the little humanitarian things we've done. And it's from what we've learned. Another thing we're trying to do now, yeah. from the maintenance we're doing, anything we think could be recycled, yeah. rather than just chucking the skip. We actually have a place where we keep bath, wash and basins. And the plan is um, maybe once in six months, we we'll take it to Nigeria and give it to people who can still use it. Taps, you know, and this is what African app will now do. So rather than we chunk the stuff that we still think, oh, this could be very useful, in, not in this part of the world, yeah. but rather than chucking the bin, people don't have good doors in their houses. Yeah. We take all the doors out, we keep them, keep the door handles. I will give you out free. Yeah. People might think, oh, but why are you doing this? They're not new. Yeah. It's better than you not having a door at your, at yes. your house or at your post or not having a bath. You know, this added lead to or not have a tap that runs water properly. Cool. So these are the things African art does. Yeah. Um, did, what did you say? African art? Arc. 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 Like okay. the Arc of Noah. Arc of Noah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, this these are the other areas we, we sort of... Um, looked into and um, in Nigeria yeah surprisingly yeah um, uh, uh, we have a company called New Season yeah and um, I'm the group chair okay yeah and what New Season does we have a small microfinance um, system where we give um, microfinance loan advice is it support. for is it is it now being ministered where um, what you know, state is it been in the okay, um, like, You know, I, I told you I'm Yoruba there. You're Yoruba, Nigeria. so it's <laughs> okay. So it's in Kwara. It's in Kwara. Kwara okay. State. In Kwara Lauren. State. Okay. So and you, I think it's most of us that have travelled and left home. Yeah. You you find out there's a void. I know. That you, we think reasonably we can feel mm. with efforts and stuff. So. This is what's prompted us yeah. to take our little resource and use it to help people. Okay. Because um, what I found out is um, a lot of people are quite um, brilliant. Yes, they, they are. They don't have opportunities. Yes. Um, and sometimes if you're waiting for the big things to happen to you in life, it might never happen. Yes. So uh, when I came here, someone just trusted me. I'll tell you this short story. My first main interview. Yeah. Um, I went there and um, after the interview, I was told, "Oh well, yeah, you got the job." And I started. Three months down the line, it was an open plan office, and my land manager, who sits up opposite me, oh David, um, can you believe Andrew cannot understand anything you told him? <laughs> David. <laughs> But what am I trying to say? Someone yeah, trusted I get you. and said, okay, we'll give you the opportunity. Of course. And I, often when I say that, everyone just laughs and say, oh, so how did you get the job? But I stayed at BP2W, which was a company. Mm. Um, it's one of the best practices I've ever worked with. Um, I did all my qualifiers exam with them, 2007, 2008, and it was really nice. Before that, the bubble busted and everyone okay. had to move on. So, our, our, we would use a new season yeah. to give opportunity to people back home. Yeah. Um, small loans. Um, we do do sell um, gas as well, cooking gas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, wow. Which Thank we you. do at, um, say for instance, students who are in school. Yeah. Because we, we've opened very close to the school. Okay. Rather than them going out of the school to look for, we just access them and they can get what they need, the camp gas, and we make sure it's safe. Because that's oh, really? sometimes in our... In, is is in there that, any training required? Do you do like a week training or a day training? Um, what are the processes? You, the main, the first thing is the registration for yeah. you to get certified. And um, they would now train you. So we had personnel who we put forward for training. So that's giving someone an opportunity to, to earn a living. Yeah. Um, and we got certified that way. 
most most of them were just health and safety. Okay. Then where you get your product from, they give you the nominated suppliers who they trust, and that's where we we'll purchase from. Uh, another area we we're trying to work on now is um, Ofanda rice. Okay. Yeah, that's another area we're trying to work on. So, wow. Uh, I'm, I'm just grand local. Okay, well, thank <laughs> you, Babatin De Davids, and thanks for telling us about your, what you do also, both in Nigeria and here in the UK. Now we go to the CEO, Scholar. Please tell us about your business and why you're here in order to promote your business in regards to what you do and what you're expecting people to know about it and to key into any aspects you want them to key in. So the floor is yours. Thank you so much, um, Nikki. And, um, just like I said earlier on, one of the main things behind, or the main goal behind what I do is yeah. the passion I have yeah. to empower people. Okay. And so for that reason, um, that has been the driving point of everything I do. Mm -hmm. um, we have been going on with the um, mental health provision for quite a while. And one of the areas we're looking to go into, we're looking to go into Nigeria as well. Okay. Whereby we can, because... Um, why was that decision made? Because people need to know the reason why we need to diversify and create different opportunities. So tell us the reason why you felt, okay, this needs to be in Nigeria. Um, I mean, as a Nigerian, just like Batune has said, there is often that need, there is often that void to want to give back. Yeah. to where you've come from. And um, I often go to Nigeria on holiday. I visit either on holiday or business trip. Mm -hmm. And I've realized that there's quite a lot of need for some of our young people because they said the youth are the future of every nation. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what is going on in Nigeria, it's not something that is palatable at the moment. Mm -hmm. However, saying that, um, we know there is issue of unemployment in Nigeria, and a lot of our youths have gone down certain unpleasant routes, which has, um, for some of them, has put them at the uh, borders of mental health. Mm -hmm. And um, again, mental health, it's something that it's not very, there's no awareness mm -hmm. to it in, the, in Nigeria. I, I, I don't know about other African countries, but yeah. because there's this huge stigma attached to it. Yeah. Um, whereas it's something that needs to be spoken about so people can get the necessary help they need, you know, Correct. to be able to, to, to live with that condition if it's diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I'm, think, I'm looking at it that I want to be able to give that support. And one of the ways we're looking to do that is to provide training as well in Nigeria. And we're also looking to working with other international organizations as mm -hmm. well um, to be able to provide them with the adequate, I mean, adequate medication in being able to um, support this niche client group. So um, it's a project we're still, it's still very much at its um, infancy stage, but hopefully we're looking to be able to expand that. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, about to make it um, <laughs> um, into construction. I did a little bit of construction, but not as an architect. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did. Wow. I mean, um, I did um, facilities management where oh. I worked with um, most major construction companies like Mansell. They were one of my major clients. Wow. About for BT, okay. um, Cisc. Um, um, you, is it Osborne? I can't remember that, it's been a while. Yeah, Osborne's, yeah. Okay. So, um, yes, we did um, quite a few jobs with them. And with the training we provide, um, we still work with them, but on a different platform. Yeah. So it's no longer me providing facilities management support with these uh, construction firms. However, we now work with young people who are looking to gain skills and experience within yes. this sector. So whereby they can, we can make referrals mm -hmm. to, to them and then they can get the basic um, qualification or experience they need to thrive in those sectors. And um, for me, one of the progression also I'm looking to, uh, Nigeria is a place I would love to. Good. I really admire what my uh, friend here is doing in Nigeria, yeah. and that has really quite um, yeah. um, inspired me a lot. 
um, because um, we must give credit to where it's due. Cool. So um, it's imperative we look at where we're coming from, even though we've come very far, to look back and see how we can empower our young people. We're pretty much getting to the borders where we can take a back seat and let the young ones rule the scene. So it's an ongoing process for me, really. I don't know when it's going to stop. Yeah. Yeah, come in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only area I was just um, that that is similar to what you've done. Um, you know, with the mentoring we did, yeah. that really was an eye opener. Where, because um, yeah. a lot of young people, they they want to do something, mm -hmm. but they, especially in this part of the world, they, they need guardians. Yeah. From when we were young. It was full competition. You had to yeah. come the time stable from when you were about seven or eight because of common entrance. You have to <laughs> know your um, chemistry. Yes, you have to. All the periodic tables and stuff. But in this part of the world, they, they've done it in a way which is more subtle. Yes. Um, you encourage to the career path. Yes. And um, I remember um, the Construction Industry Council actually raised it. This was 2010, 2011, and um, they want every well, volunteering to go to schools yeah. um, with six form students where they get them ready to go to uni. And by the time the results come, sometimes it's not what they really wanted. Mm. So they gave us the opportunity to um, talk to them in the school then we have the career okay. people from which um, we can relate to them and just to give them the guide really um, okay. what in their choice of courses and I did that as well oh, which is quite good. Fantastic. The program has just ended. Thank you so much to CEO Babatende, CEO Scholar. Thank you so much. I mean okay. I hope you come back again. Um, you've been a lovely guest, um, and I hope you enjoyed the program. Um, we've covered business today. We've covered Baba Tinde's business, and also the um, scholar business as well. Um, Center Point Africa is every Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. I hope you tune in. Um, we have exciting programs. It, tem it stems through education, politics, community development. Please tune in. Again, my name is Nikki Emilike, CEO of Nisting College, Centerpoint Africa. Nikki, thank you.